near the village of Dollar, there's a well-known hill, which is called the Maiden's Castle. This hill has been the site of many strange and mysterious happenings throughout Scottish history. To find this mystical site, you must head uphill from Dollar, heading towards Castle Campbell. You will cross a small stream and follow the depleted forest until you find a gap in the hills and a small well. This is the Maiden's Well, a magical spring which produces clean, fresh water all year round. It was even said by some of the locals to have restorative or healing powers. Hugh Halliburton, a local historian, wrote in 1905 that the well had obtained its name from a princess who was held captive in Castle Campbell. Once per week, the princess was allowed out of the castle to walk in the neighbouring countryside with an escort of Campbell guards. It was on one of these walks that she found the well and drank from it. This became a weekly ritual for the imprisoned woman and the men of the castle would refer to the well as the Maiden's Well. Other tales suggest the well was haunted by the spirit of a beautiful woman. She would appear only at night and drink from the well. Many a Scotsman, bewitched by her beauty, would try to win the affections of the ghostly woman, but this was what the evil spirit desired. It is said that a kiss from the unearthly maiden of the well would cause instant death to the unexpecting admirer, who would then be dragged to an icy cold grave at the bottom of the well. Earlier accounts tell of rituals and magical rites which could summon the maiden of the well, but these did not tend to end well for the novice conjurer. The locals would regularly visit the well to make offerings to the spirits in the hope that they would be granted some favour from the fairies. This practice still continues today. Less than 100 yards past the maiden's well, you will stumble upon a large rounded hill. This hill is the maiden's castle. The history of this site is quite mysterious. In many of the old and even more recent maps, the hill is referred to as the maiden's castle. Yet there are no ruins up on the hill. It was thought that the site may have been a hill fort or cairn at some time, but recent archaeological digs at the site have found nothing. Whatever the original purpose of the site, be it arcane rituals or a warrior's tomb, the knowledge has been lost to time. What we do know is that the Maiden's Castle is mentioned in many old tales, usually in connection to the fairies. Fairies are an intrinsic part of Scottish folklore. There was a time in Scotland where every river, well, burn and loch was protected by an ancient spirit or fairy. To anger or upset the fairies would commonly result in retribution from the creature. Crops could wilt and family members could become sick or ill. Not all of the fair folk are vengeful spirits that need to be appeased. Some enjoy the company of humans. They revel in music, dancing and fun. But you are best to be careful when dealing with the fairies, as they are very intelligent and often devious creatures. It is these unpredictable spirits that have made their home in the Maiden's Castle. An encounter with the fairies from the hill was recorded in 1901 by John Rees, a folklore researcher. It was told to him by the Reverend of Dollar, a Mr. Andrew Clark. The Tale of the Glendevin Piper One day a piper, carrying his bagpipes, was headed to the village of Dollar from his home in Glendevin, not four miles away. As he crossed a stream, he looked up at the empty grey hillside of the Maiden's Castle. He had heard strange stories of the hill, but put it down to old wives' tales. As he passed the hill, the piper heard a sudden burst of music. Quickly he spun around to try and find the source of the noise, and there before him, what had once been a dreary grey hill, was now a great castle. Light shone from every window, the sound of dancing and singing emanating forth from the open door. He went closer to the door, rather incautiously, and began to peer inside, when suddenly a large procession of dancing fairies came from behind him and entered the castle. Being caught up in the dancing and the pushing, he ended up inside the great hall. 
brightly lit by candles and torches. All around him were fairies, some dancing, some feasting, others singing, and some playing odd instruments. Within seconds of entering the castle, many of the fair folk came up to him and asked him to play his pipes. He refused. He said he had to leave. He had to continue his journey. But the fairies wouldn't take no for an answer. They took him to the centre of the hall and told him to play. The piper started playing and a tremendous roar of cheering began. The fair folk loved the music and danced up a storm. The piper had never met such an audience in his life. They treated him as though he was the greatest piper in all the land. Each time a song ended, there would be thunderous applause and calls for more songs, even requests were shouted. The piper continued to play, song after song, jig after jig, reel after reel, for two whole days. It is then when the piper started to become anxious, as he thought about his family. They must be wondering where he's been. He told them he would be back by morning. The piper plucked up the courage to ask the fair folk permission to leave. He told them his family would be worried and that he had been gone for far too long. The fairies sympathised with him and promised to let him leave. If only he would play one last song for them. Piper quickly agreed and for the last time he played his heart out. The dancers were a blur all around him, the singing and chanting, the stamping of feet. And as the song closed, the loudest applause yet came from the cheering crowd. True to their word, the fair folk let the piper be on his way. The piper walked out of the castle door and found that he was all alone in the grey moonlight, standing upon the hill. There was no castle, no light, no music. His original journey to Dollar completely gone from his mind as he began back in the direction of Glendevon. Once returned, he entered his father's house, and to his surprise, none of his family were there, only an old, grey man, sleeping by the fire. The bewildered piper woke the man and asked if he knew where his family had gone, and told him that he had only been gone two days. The old man, unsure of the stranger in his house, told the piper that he had lived here all of his days, and so had his parents and his grandparents before them. The piper in dismay told the old man of what had happened to him, the castle, the fairies, and explained his current confusion. The old man took a heavy sigh and told the piper he may have an answer, but it will not bring comfort. The old man told of a story he had heard many years ago it was said that his grandfather's brother was a piper and had left one evening on a journey to Dollar and never returned. No trace of the man's brother was ever found. The piper with tears in his eyes began to understand something dreadful. He asked the man how long ago this had happened. He was told that the brother went missing almost 100 years ago. The piper had been in the castle all that time. The tale of the Glendevon Piper is similar to many Scottish stories. These often feature music and tell of fairy songs carrying mortals out of time. This tale is reminiscent of the saying, time flies when you're having fun, but with a harsh lesson at the end. In the story, the Piper finally felt like his music was appreciated when playing in the Maiden's Castle. He drank in the admiration and applause, but as he got lost in the ongoing revelry, he lost everything else he had. Sold it all for 15 minutes of fame, you could say. Many also see this tale as a coming of age story, in which a young man left his family and had to return from the spirit world as a more mature man left to his independence in a new and frightening world. The Maiden's Well and the Maiden's Castle still sit outside of Dollar on the west of Scotland to this very day. Some even say you can hear the wailing moans of the Maiden of the Well, and on other nights, the dreamy music of the fairies, inviting all those who hear it to come dance in their wonderful castle. Thank you for listening.